there were too many boys and girls going to school at that point. And so they uh, bought a house, you know, where the circular driveway is when you go into Russell's, into um, Hopkins Academy. Okay, right there stood a house that was owned by the name, by a man by the name of uh, Dr. Bonneville. Uh, and, okay, Dr. Bonnie, Dr. Bonnie. I'm getting the two counts mixed up here. Okay, it was called Dr. Bonnie's Estate. And they bought it from his estate. And that's where the boys and girls went to high school. Uh, at the time they bought Dr. Bonnie's um, house, they also bought a barn. It was a horse barn. And today, we use the horse barn for our gymnasium. They converted the horse barn into uh, an auditorium and a gymnasium, as you can see it today. But just stop. The next time you go and think, the next time you go over to uh, Jim, you can think that that was once a horse barn. Well, after a while, they decided they needed even more uh, room. So they tore it down the Dr. Bonnie's house and they built the present Hopkins Academy. And I think that was in 1954. And yeah, I think it was 1954, 1955 when that building was built. So Hopkins Academy has a long, long history. And you need to think about it's not being in the same place all the time. Gather closer. That's it. That's wonderful. There's a lot to see from this point of view. What you might do is look all the way up the common. Can you see that big tree at the end there? Yeah. That's, that's where, okay, that big tree stands on a dike. I'm sorry. That uh, helps to keep the Connecticut River in its Dead. The Connecticut River every so often overflows, especially in the springtime. And uh, we've had some pretty bad floods here in Hadley, where people's houses were uh, underwater all the way up to the second floor. Um, so they built that dike, and that helps to keep the river in its bed. Is this cover? Yes. Just go to the left of the dike, and the dike, and there's the face. Uh-huh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then look all the way down here. Can you see where that car, those cars are going way down to the end? But it is just one common. It's not the commons. It's the common. Also, while you're looking at it, look to see all of the trees and how they go up in a row. That's called a tree belt. And Hadley's very, very lucky to have so many wonderful trees planted in a row around the common. The tree belt. Okay, yes, there are telephone wires. But keep in mind that this was the oldest part of town. Alright, now turn around and look at that big, big white building over there. in coaches and um, pulled by horses and uh, they needed a place to rest and to feed the horses and for them to get um, uh, something to eat also. So that was an inn. It was called the Lucius Crane Inn. Lucius Crane. I'll help you with the spelling when we get back to school. Just write out what you can here. Lucius there were horse barns that used to go out behind it um, through Nevada's parking lot. 
but of course they've been torn down. We don't need horse barns any longer because we don't travel by horses any longer. At one point, boys and girls went to school in the Lucius Crane um, Inn because they were um, getting ready to go from one building to another. Under there. Yes, we're going back to see the stone in just a couple of minutes. Remember I told you the Russell name would pop up again. Reverend John Russell was one of the first people to come to Hadley, and he was the minister for the people who came here. His house stood about where that red car is now. And a long, long time ago, he uh, took in three people who were trying to get away from the king's men. One of them was Claw, one of them was Whaley, and the third one was a man by the name of Dixwell. And Mr. Dixwell didn't stay very long, but the other two came here and they were hiding. They were hiding upstairs in the minister's attic, and we understand that there were passageways in the house so that they could go from there down to the cellar. I'm going to stop my talk because Mr. Russell. Mr. Russell. We've got a nice sunny morning to come walking. Um, where are you in the story? Why don't you finish the story and I'll take it after that. Okay. Um, I was going to go into the story of, of the Angel of Hadley. Oh, I see. Okay. At one point, uh, the story goes that Hadley was about to be attacked by Indians. And it was a, a morning when everybody else was way down at the end of the common in the first meeting house. They were having a worship service. And that was the time when uh, General Goff decided that he would take a walk. He figured nobody was around and no one would see him. And it was a secret that he was in the community. So he was out walking along the streets, and uh, the story says that he saw the Indians approaching from the woods. Now, if you can imagine that Middle Street was woods at that time, then that gives you an understanding of how little Hadley was at that time. He uh, was an older man at that time, and he rushed as fast as his older legs could carry him down the common, and he had a sword, the story goes, and he had a long white beard and white hair. And he rushed along, and he burst into the, third, into the first uh, meeting house, and he warned people of the attack. He led people uh, to attack against the Indians and uh, got them so that they would not come into the village and burn their houses and take their food. And then he disappeared again. He went into hiding again. He went back into hiding in uh, Reverend Russell's house, and people didn't know where he went. There were so few people in the community who knew that he was there that they said that he was sent by God and that he was an angel. He must have been an angel. And this was the story of the angel of Hadley. Uh, did you show them the stone? No, we haven't seen the stone oh, yet. That's where we're going to go next. Perhaps. But before we do that, why don't you look way up the common as far as you can see, and in the middle of the common is a white stone. Can you see it? Yeah. Well, that's where the first meeting house was. So if you can imagine this old man uh, walking or hurrying really fast from about where Travers is, up to the church that was where that white stone is, he had a long way to go in a hurry, didn't he? Mm. And he was there to warn the people. And he warned them so quickly that they were able to drive the Indians away before they did much harm. And that was a really very great thing. 
and then as Mrs. Potter told you, he disappeared. And because he disappeared and nobody knew who he was or where he came from, they said, oh, that must have been an angel. But it was really a man named General Goff. Did you see Goff Street a few minutes ago? Yeah. That's named after him. General Goff, General William Goff, was the angel of Hadley. We'll show you a stone that tells about people called regicides. General Goff was called a regicide. That means he was on the uh, jury that condemned the King of England to die. And uh, so the English people, some of the English people were out to get him. And that's why he was hiding in Hadley. Edward Whaley, that was one of them. Major General William Goff, that was the name of the Hadley. Uh, refuge, that means a hiding place, in the cellar of Reverend John Russell Jr. And those dates down the bottom tell when they were here, or when General Goff was here in Hadley hiding. And if you want to copy that. I'll give you a minute before we go to see where that stone really belongs. That stone really doesn't belong there. That is, he was on the jury in England that condemned the King of England to die. Now, regicide means killer of kings. They went out to get Whaley and Goff because they had been on this jury that condemned the King of England to die. Uh, they were only two of a great many or a number of people. Other people were hiding too, but in other places. These men were hiding in Hadley because it was the farthest away place of any place they could be. And the uh, English might not find them if they were in Hadley because Hadley was on the edge of the wilderness at that time. You know what the wilderness is? Place uh, where there wasn't any more houses. Yes. Well, was the king that died, was he a good person? Some people thought so. Did he die? Yes, he died. Yeah. <laughs> and a new person took his place for a while. John Russell's house was where Goff and Whaley were hiding, was about where that car is just parking. That's where Reverend John Russell's house was. Good morning. Uh, the house, we don't know exactly how it looked, but it looked a lot like all the other houses around here. It was small, it wasn't painted, and uh, it had an attic and a cellar, and it had stairs that went up near the chimney on the inside so that General Goff could go from the cellar to the attic without being seen. There's a secret place near the chimney where he could go up and down. The people who lived in the house knew he was there, of course. And a few of the neighbors knew, but that's all. The rest of the people in Hadley didn't know. It was a very big secret. And that's why they couldn't tell anybody what happened, except that it was an angel. Uh, can you imagine that when this house was here, Indians were around here too, and for a while, the Indians could come to a person's house and have supper if they wanted to, or they could come and buy things and sell things and walk around because it was safe. The Indians were friendly with the white people at first. It was a time of about 18 or 20 years uh, when the Indians and the people of Hadley were friends. Communication center, you know, this is where the fire department headquarters are and the police department headquarters. That used to be a barn. Uh, in front of the barn, there used to be, at one time, a church. You don't remember the old Holy Rosary Church that was there before the one that is there now. But there used to be an old Holy Rosary Church. And before that ho old Holy Rosary Church was there, that very same church was standing here. But it wasn't Holy Rosary Church then, it was another church. It was called Russell Church. It was named after Reverend John Russell. And the people of West Street went to that church. Mostly just the people of West Street. And then they stopped going there and the Holy Rosary people bought it for their church and moved it away. It's fun to look at uh, attic windows. Lots of times attic windows are the oldest windows in the house. That's true of that attic window. See how small the window panes are? 
and how narrow the window is. Probably at one time, many of the windows in the house were just about like that. They saved the oldest ones for in the attic. This house is unusual because not too many years ago, there used to be a door where that window is right by the electric light a meter. There was a door there, and it was called a coffin door. Do you know what a coffin is? Yeah. yeah. All right. In those days, funerals were not held at a funeral home or at a church. Instead, they were in a house, in the person's house. And it was usually in the front room. And it, the house was built so that the door, the front door, led right up to the foot of the stairs and there wasn't any room for a coffin to turn around and so they had a special door in the house just for coffins so the coffin door was about where that uh, electric uh, outlet is and the coffins could be carried in and out of the room where the funeral was so that was a coffin door and somebody put a window in its place instead of the door which is too bad because now we can't see how a coffin door really I don't think so. I think it's just a decoration. Cool. But isn't that interesting? First, we turn around and look at that little building over there. That's the end of a very, very old house. They use it for a garage now, but it was a part of a big house that stood there. And see how small the window panes are? That's a sign that it's very, very old. Uh, if you were looking at it when you came by, you would see there are arches. Those arches are the kind of arch that was built that were built on the inside of houses in Hadley as well as on the outside of houses. Sometimes those arches were in churches too. But this building right straight ahead of you is very interesting. Guess what it was? No, it wasn't a church. Not a garage because they didn't a have any house for garages. Oh, uh -huh. A meeting house. A meeting house? No. School? It was a school. It was a school for the children who lived on the, this end of West Street. Do any of you live on this end of West Street? Okay. Well, anyway, if you did live on this end of West Street, you would go to the school for grades one, two, three, four, five, six because that's where the children all went in one room at one time for all grades one to six. No kindergarten. Uh, on that side is a door. And on this other side is a door. One for the boys and one for the girls. And when you went in, you were all in one room and one teacher. Yes. Does anyone live there now? Yes, it's a house now. Somebody uh, rents it for a house, but it used to be a school. And and the grades went up. The six, like sixth grade would be in the highest bench or something. The sixth grade would sit in the back of the room, farthest away from the teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any question about that? <laughs> How many would like to go to school like that? <laughs> oh no. House. And I want you to look at the doorway. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Very fancy. What do you notice about the front door? Very small and it's two doors. Two doors, and they're both very narrow, aren't they? What else do you notice about it? It has decorations on it. What kind? You see those crisscross plate pieces at the bottom? Those were supposed to keep witches out of the house. That's what they said. Hadley's oldest house. That's what does it mean? Hadley's oldest house, that's right. It's right there. This house was not here when the Indians were around here, and it wasn't here when Reverend John Russell was around here, or when General Goff was around here. They never saw this house because this wasn't built until 1713, which is a very, very long time ago. But it isn't the kind of house that the very first people of Hadley lived in. This was a pretty nice house. The man who built it uh, was a very prosperous man. That means that he earned a very good living. He was a merchant and he was a farmer and he had many, many things going for him. 
this house is built the way I told you about the other house. If we could go in the front door, immediately we would see a staircase. There's about this much space between the front door and the staircase, and then the staircase goes this way upstairs. And inside this house, although it is very, very old, it's very, very nice. The porch on the side was added afterwards. They didn't have porches in those long ago times. Yes. Does anyone live there now? Oh, yes, people live here now. Mm -hmm. Four people live here now. Do you have a question? It has very nice things inside. Is it all original space inside? To be a house, let's look at it. Turn right around and look at it. Um, okay. Church? Do you know what this used to be? I know that used to be a barn. No, we're talking about this one. A meeting house. No, this wasn't a meeting house and it wasn't a school. It was a store. It was a very, very nice store. And inside they had very fine uh, woodwork. The counters were nice, shiny, dark, heavy wood. And the very best people of Northampton who had the most money used to come to this groceries and spices and cloth and medicine and all kinds of things. It was a general store. Very, very nice store for the very uh, most expensive things. This belonged to somebody whose name was Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter lived in the house next door, but this was his store. Does that remind you of the other house that we looked at? Double door? No, but it's very fancy all the way around the edge. That kind of a doorway is called a Connecticut River doorway because there are doorways like that in Old Deerfield and in lots of towns along the Connecticut River. Did it used to be a barn? No, it didn't used to be a barn. It's always been a house. This house was here when George Washington was president mm -hmm. and before that. It's this a very old, old house. house. Well, it isn't the oldest house. It's been all yeah, fixed up nicely so and the people who live there are still working on it. It's, uh, this also is a porter house and the interesting thing about this is that at one time it was a school for girls. And girls a little older than you would come here and some of them would live in the house and go to school here. And some of the girls would live in other houses nearby because they were not from Hadley always, but from other towns. So this was Miss Porter's school for girls at one time. Do you have a question about this? The only four story house, I believe. No. Have you turn around that way and look as far as you can up by that pine tree or spruce tree or whatever it is. That's the dike that holds the Connecticut River where it belongs. Once upon a time that dike was not there and the river came right up over the common and into these houses and right into the inside of the house so that the first floor of the houses was were flooded. And they didn't want that to happen anymore. And so after the last big flood, they built that dike to keep the river where it belongs. So if you were on the other side of the dike, you would see the Connecticut River. And on the other side of the Connecticut River is Hatfield. And long ago, Hatfield belonged to Hadley. And the people of Hatfield would come across the river in their boats or canoes to come to church or the, to the meeting house. And the meeting house was on the common. We'll see where it stood in a minute. So you can imagine that it was a long way for the people of Hatfield to come to Hadley for meeting. And that's why they started Hatfield, because it was much easier to have their own town. Lots of the people in Hatfield were related to the people in Hadley. They all knew each other. Lots of people were brothers or cousins or sisters or something to the people in Hadley. We're going to be crossing, oh, I might tell you too, that 
Long ago, there were houses where the river is now, a whole row of houses beyond that tree, beyond that dike. But the river came and took the houses away. And so uh, the West Street Common doesn't have any houses on the end of the common anymore. Did you want to ask a question? Okay, stay together. This stone, I want you to look way down near that farthest orange tree where Carver's restaurant is. You can see the cars crossing on Route 9, can't you? Well, Carver's is way down there. And that's where the Angel of Hadley saw the Indians coming and he hurried all the way up to the meeting house. And this stone shows you where the meeting house was. But before that, I want you to realize that this stone for the meeting house shows you that it was closer to Hatfield on purpose so that the people of Hatfield could come to the meeting house. And the people way down on the very far end of West Street down by Bay Road, the other side of Route 9, those people had a long way to come to church, too. This was the best place for the meeting house. Mr. Russell, before we move, right. um, do you know uh, approximately where the, the first uh, Hopkins Academy stood here on the common? It was at the communication center, but on the common. Oh, I didn't realize it was that far down. Thank yeah. you. Um, but the first one was in a house, you know, Nathaniel yeah. White's house way down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> General Joseph Hooker and his house where he was born used to stand behind that white stone across the street about where that brown house is now. But his house was bigger than that brown house, taller, but it was also a dark color. Looked a little bit like that, too. The stone was put up many years after General Hooker lived there. So uh, anybody could tell where the spot was. There's a message on each side of the stone. So some of you will be looking at one side and some the other. General Joseph Hooker was born in that house and he lived there for a while when he was a boy and then he lived in lots of other houses in the center of Hadley before he went to West Point uh, to uh, learn to be a soldier and a general. He uh, went to Hopkins Academy too. And after he left Hopkins Academy he went to West Point and he never came back to live in Hadley anymore after that. He came back to visit but he didn't come back to live, yes. I think it's steps of the stone. You think it's steps of the stone? I don't know. Okay, let's... Upon a time... Michael! Okay, that's nice and clean, thank you. That stone tells me that once upon a time there was a driveway that came in from the road and it went right up this way through the tree belt and it came about where you're standing, and then went out again, about there. And you know how that stone tells me that? It tells me because this is what they call the horse block. How can they see if you're all on it? Yeah. No way. Stepped from the carriage way down onto the ground, and so they stepped on the stone first. So they could, on that stone so that they could get out of their carriage better. So it's called a stepping stone or a horse block. What do you men Well, men were wearing trousers. It was easier for them to do. Well, they stepped on it, too. But it was mostly for the women to make it easier for them to get out of the carriage. And also, sometimes there would be mud here. Colin, Colin, sometimes there would be mud, and that would help the ladies keep their skirts clean, too. That's right. Everything I want. Go when um, people in Hadley raised more tobacco than they did corn.
right here in this field there was corn, but I bet that there was tobacco there many years ago. And when yes. tobacco was raised in Hadley, this was one of the sorting shops, this big red building was one of the sorting shops where the tobacco was uh, sorted before it went to market. So many people would go there to work in the wintertime to uh, sort the leaves and pack them up in boxes to send them away to uh, be made into cigars. This was field-grown tobacco, not tent tobacco. This was a sorting shop. It's made now into something else. I guess that somebody lives there. You can have a chance to go down and see the oldest part of that cemetery. It's been there a long, long time. That fancy thing is called Keystone. You'll find that in many, many places in Hadley. Down there, there's a little thing where you go down there and turn. Yeah. So you go to the bridge. down there very long. I want to tell you uh, about where you're sitting. This is about the spot where Molly Webster's house was. Molly Webster was a person that they called a witch. Right. She's sometimes called the Hadley Witch. She was just a poor woman and people picked on her. And when they picked on people in the olden days, they sometimes called them a witch. This uh, lady, uh, well, they blamed her for all kinds of things. Like if they were coming from the meadow with a load of hay and the man that loaded the hay on the wagon didn't do a very good job of it, it was lopsided and it hit the rough spots in the road and the hay fell off, they said, oh, the witch did that. Or if the baby was sick and it had a convulsion, which is a kind of sickness, and the baby moved around in strange ways in a cradle, they said, oh, the witch did that. In other words, they blamed Molly Webster for bad things that happened in Hadley. She really wasn't a witch, not a Halloween witch, not that kind of a witch. She was a woman that they blamed things on because in those days that was a common thing to do, to blame witches for bad things. So they took her to court in Northampton to see if she was a witch. And then they took her to Boston to court there see if she was a witch and they said oh no she's not a witch she's just a poor old woman and they sent her back to Hadley and then she lived here for a long time in her house but the people still picked on her one time some uh, boys teenagers I guess uh, put her in the snow buried her up in the snow one winter but she got out of the snow and went home and she was okay and she lived to be an old old woman and nothing ever happened except that they blamed her for everything. So she, Molly Webster's house was about where you're sitting. And her husband, Thomas Webster, was uh, the pound keeper. Do you know what a pound is? Yes. Where animals are kept when they don't have a home? If they went roaming around on the common and they didn't, uh, a cow for instance, and they didn't know whose cow it was, they put it in the pound until somebody came to get it. Well, Thomas Webster was the man that took care of the animals that were in the pound. And the pound was across the street, about where that barn is, probably. The pound was just, uh, not a building, but something made of, uh, we don't know if it was stone or if it was wood, like a big circle. And in that place was where the animals were kept, if they were stray animals. What else do you think I should tell Mrs. Carter about this location? I don't want them sitting on the ground too long. <laughs> uh, just that, uh, remember when we start talking about um, the settlement time, that this was an important road going from the place where the houses were down to where their um, crops were being grown. This is all rich farmland in through here, and the river quite often uh, will overflow and um, make it even, you know, keep it good and rich. The Indians had fields here, corn fields and squash and pumpkin fields here before the white people did. And so this was good farmland already for them to use. Uh, this was the road to the meadow. The cemetery road was the road to the meadow. And the meadow was all that big land out there. And everybody on Western had a part of the meadow for their own farm. Uh, helped to decorate the house.
Can you imagine being up in that attic and looking out on West Street Common? Probably up in the attic long ago, there were old costumes and trunks of mysterious things. It would be fun to be up there on a rainy day looking out at the common. Uh, we're, we've seen only a part of one end of West Street. And the other end is on the other side of Route 9. And it's about as big as this end of West Street. A very, very big, big territory. In fact, West Street is about a mile long and very, very wide. So you've only seen part of it. Sometime, maybe you'd like to go for a walk with your folks on the other end of West Street and see some of the things down there. Those things are also interesting. The, the, where was the fence look like? Where did that go around? Yes. Uh, in the days when the Indians were enemies of the people in Hadley, the, the people had a palisade, or as uh, we might say, a fence around the town to keep the Indians away. And that was in back of people's barns. Um, let's turn around and I don't know exactly, but farther back than that garage was the palisade. And it went all the way up and down both sides of the street and around the end and around that end with gates. And there was a gate that would uh, they could open to go to the meadows there. <laughs> and there was a gate there that they could go to the woods. Uh, otherwise, they had to keep the gates closed because the Indians might come in the gate. That would be bad. The palisades were built of big poles stuck in the ground, very deep, pointed on top and close together like pencils standing up. It's only very, very big ones. And uh, this summer, people tried to find out exactly where, they were, where the palisade was standing and they found one spot where it was really standing. Sometime we'll tell you about it. People used the common in mm -hmm. earlier oh, days? Sure. Mm -hmm. The common was here for a special, special thing. Um, it was uh, grassy mm -hmm. like very, this, very nice. but it wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. mowed. But this is where the animals were pastured. If there was a riding horse, he would be pastured here some of the time. If it was a cow that they were milking, it might be here on the common. Uh, people would uh, crisscross the common to go from house to house because there weren't sidewalks at first and there weren't roads like this at first either. So they crisscross from one house to another. On this common, the militia would practice. You know what the militia was? It was like a private army for Hadley. The soldiers, the men of the town, 16 years old and older, had to practice being soldiers and they would march up and down the common practicing uh, being soldiers. Uh, besides that, they would have other things going on here. Of course, the meeting house was here. That was for everybody. Uh, the school was here at one time. Well, it was a little bit further down than where we're standing, but not too much. The school was here for the people of Hadley at one time. Everything that was uh, in the common or on the common was for everybody to use. And the common is still for everybody to use and it belongs to the town of Hadley. And it belonged to the town of Hadley then and it still does belong to the town of Hadley. And so does the tree belt. Is there any question about it? Yeah. Well, I read once that uh, this is all known as one street, West Street, and it's the widest street in the United States? Uh, longest. Longest street? But probably not in the United States, oh, in no. New England. One in of them, I think we have to say one of the in fact, um, most commons have been subdivided by buildings, um, but I think that we could say that this is the one that's most intact at the present time. In New England? In New England, right. Uh, they said that this was modeled after Wethersfield, Connecticut. And of course, some of the very earliest settlers came from Wethersfield, right. so that's natural. Anything else? I've enjoyed the, the walk, and I hope you've gotten something out of it. And Mrs. Cutter's going to show you some more interesting things along the way. Okay? Thanks.
If you will look to see how the ground rises about this point, uh, this is the bed of the former railroad tracks. Uh, we had uh, trains coming in and out of Hadley at one time. And uh, we've seen a few changes in the eight or nine years that I've been taking this walk with boys and girls and Miss Russell leading us. The train tracks have disappeared. That's one of the things that we've seen. The other, we saw the coffin door disappear. And uh, little by little, there are very subtle changes taking place. We don't have trains coming into Hadley anymore. But I don't, just wanted to point out to you where the bed of the tracks went. And up above here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the trains. Uh, so let's go, and we go. If we traveled in this direction on the train. Northampton. To Northampton, okay. And if we travel in this direction. Amherst. We would go to Amherst. Good for you, Katie. Now turn around and take a look at this house. That house once stood so that it faced onto West Street. Uh, and when they got ready to put the train uh, track through here, about the middle of the 1800s, there wasn't room enough for the train to go through here to put the tracks in. Michael, come over here, please. Thank you. Okay. Now, you can see this brick building over here. Who knows how that building is used today? Right, for, for potato storage, and uh, I believe for either potatoes or onions through the years. They had to have storage places along the railroad tracks because that was an important form of transportation. They used trains long before they had these big trailer trucks to um, transport all of the products that were grown here in Hadley. So sometimes they had to have a place to store those things the products before they could put them on the train and then ship them either east to Amherst or west to Northampton and points beyond that. Down the street you can see the brown building there. If you had a box or a package that had to go on the train, you would take it to that building there because that was the freight station at one point. The freight station is where you would take the box and they would weigh it up and they would tell you how, uh, how much it was going to cost for you to ship it out by train to go to one place or another. Beyond that point was a passenger station, station where people could go in and they could buy a ticket and uh, they could take the train either going east or west. And Miss um, Russell said that she can remember a time when she was a little girl. They would go there, buy their ticket, and they had these long, long um, uh, seats uh, in the wa waiting room there. And they were nice and smooth, and they were shiny. And while she was waiting for her parents to buy the tickets to go on the train, she would slide up and down mm -hmm. on those seats. Uh, that was a nice memory for her, and they would go, uh, travel probably toward, North, toward Amherst and go to visit relatives. So the train was a very important form of transportation in the early 1900s and from the time that it went through about the mid-1800s. Today, as you can see, there are no trains going through Hadley. We have other ways of shipping our goods, and we have cars to travel in and buses. Trains, and we talked about uh, horses and carriages, and uh, going back to the time of the horses and wagons and carriages, this used to be a blacksmith shop. Sebs was a blacksmith shop, and uh, inside, if you ever have a chance, you can go in and you can see where the horses kind of nibbled at the wood uh, while they were waiting to have their shoes put on them. And uh, today, of course, it's, it services another kind of transportation. What kind of transportation? What kind of transportation does have it have a service now? Cars, okay. So we went from horses to cars.